Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Livewire Game Show. I did press record that time, we're safe. Anyway, we're all here, we're all sick in some way, some more than others, so it's quite appropriate that we're talking about the Soulsborne genre. <laughs> Soulsborne games. <laughs> it's, it's appropriate! It's, it's, the, oh, it's the Dark Souls of podcast. I have um, no soul right now. <laughs> You've just been you've been held up by two pieces of fucking coil. Uh, yeah, we got that, <laughs> Bernie's. Anyway, yeah, we're we're gonna talk about. I th I think the official title is our first experience with Souls games, mm. um, because for the first time in a while, we've all been playing the same game this week. Um, but yeah, yes. before we get into that, we'll have a quick catch up as we always do. We start with the person who wasn't here last week. Dylan, how have you been? What have you been I was like, to? that's that's me. <laughs> it took me a minute to realise that. <laughs> that's that's hey, basically summing up my week. Before we go, do you want to see something that... Do you want to see what I have, Steve, that you don't have? Pokemon Time and Pearl, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I can go inside and get my copy of Diamond, if you want. No, because you'll be back in like 40 minutes or faint along the way. Probably. Need liquid. Yeah, so on that segue, <laughs> I've got COVID. <laughs> Yay! Um, How can you what? have something that doesn't exist? I'm joking. Because I'm just part of the the media. Um, what's it called? Yeah. Conspiracy. Left wing. Left wing. Yeah, it's, I'm just, getting I'm pretty, it's getting pretty bad again. Someone just came to the door with an envelope, and I just <laughs> opened it, and it said, "It can if you read this, and say you have COVID on a live <laughs> broadcast, we'll do it." Blink twice Excellent. if you're doing this podcast against your will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He blinks twice and just falls asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'd tell you to cough twice, but that's it. That's not out of the ordinary. That's gonna happen. No, I'm gonna. I need to cough now because you just said cough. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's. It's been a roller coaster for three days. Um, you're on the upside, up side of it, so at least, at least that. Yeah. Yeah, like the first two days I was really bad flu-wise and like chills and aches and not being able to sleep and blah, blah, blah. Today, I don't have any of that, but I have zero energy. Like I I have no appetite. Like I was only saying to Stephen earlier on, I've eaten like one meal over the last three days, like each day, like at like eight o'clock. That's why you have no even. energy, yeah. Like, yeah, but it's like, you know when you're sick or you know, when you're not hungry, you don't want to eat anything. But as soon as you start eating, you're like, oh my God, give me everything. It doesn't feel like that at all. Like I started eating food earlier on and I was like, I don't actually want any of this. Um, my Have taste is kind of going taste, as well. Yeah. A little bit. Like I was saying, I had orange juice this morning, but I don't know. Did it taste like orange juice or is it because I know what orange juice tastes like? Because I had like, um, I had sausages last night and I couldn't taste them. And then I had like seven up today and I couldn't taste it. And same with like two paste this morning. I couldn't taste it. So well, that's the orange yeah. juice litmus test. Just drink it after you've had some two paste. And if it makes you want to, <laughs> if it makes you want to vomit, then it tastes Do you like feel orange. worse than you did before? <laughs> yeah, it yeah. works. Um, yeah. So t today's just pretty, pretty bad like that. I had a PCR test today as well. So that was my, my daily excursion. Um, but yeah, like I, I was only saying as well, Stephen, I was playing Apex earlier on. I lasted like two games. <laughs> and it was funny because like, I know what I want to do, but I just, my reaction speed was just so bad. It was, it was ridiculous. That's was, when you know crazy. you're sick. Like that's where, yeah. that's how Louise knows when I'm sick. If I start to play a game and after five minutes go, no, I can't do this. I'm not bothering go back to bed. That's when she kind of yeah. goes. Oh, you're actually sick. <laughs> this Fair is <laughs> serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was, like, I was playing Destiny on the couch, and that was fine because it's that kind of monotonous gameplay where you don't need to pay attention to stuff. But yeah, I, ha I like it actually, those two games drained me to the point where I was like, I actually can't play anymore. I just, I need to like take a step away. Um, but yeah, so that, that's been me the last few days. I think I got it when I was away in work. Um, so, so that's been. It's been my week. I haven't really played a lot, apart from Demon Souls with you guys before. Oh, you got. Before I got sick, um, I started playing WoW again. Actually, I noticed that. I made. Um, I just saw a few videos of new build types for. Does a new update that got announced? Um, nine point two. It's like the last expansion of the expansion. They bring out like three updates, or last DLC, so like a season pass kind of thing. Um. So I said I'll level up a new character for that. 
it's free up until like level 20 so i was like i'll level up to 20 and then decide only level 20 do... yeah and this is character 60. you start off on like level 8 as well which is a bit like you're only getting half of it but um yeah i said i'll play free to play up until that point see if um see if it takes me up until the the new update and oh, that's really been it yeah not, not you are exciting. struggling yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying not to talk fast, but I naturally talk fast, and it's it's really hard. It reminds I'm me kind of, of burning out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of I was watching the Sky Oblivion update, and the main guy that runs the channel that does the updates, he's also sick at the moment. And over the course of his show, his voice just started getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> Whereas the other the other people working, I were just kind of like, dude, shut the fuck up. We've got this. <laughs> Yeah, so like, oh, I'll shut the fuck up. You just take yeah. it away. But like he was kind of, he was kind of like, ah, oh, but like it's already bad, so I might as well just commit to it. And they're like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Don't make it worse. Oh, I mean, I was away for the last two weeks, and then the one time I'm here, I'm sick. So if I'm here, I might as well show up. <laughs> it's that it's that time of the year, and I don't know what it's like in other countries, but we're currently on the on the cusp of our fourth wave of this shit so yeah finally got me <laughs> it's 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 getting bad again it really is like but you know, our, our that... cases have been high just to kind of tangent off gaming for a second our cases have been high but it's the hospitalizations are starting to catch up now which is where yeah. the, it's which is where the scary stuff starts again but like that's what i was saying to steven earlier on i was like i'm fully vaccinated so if I wasn't vaccinated, I can only imagine the state that I'd be that I'm in, or that I would potentially be in. Because like I'm immunocompromised uh, as it is, so to be like this after being doubly vaxxed, I don't even want to know what it would have been like without being vaxxed. Maybe putting up a job advert for a new third member on their team. Yeah, comes with free um, free demon cells carries. <laughs> Stephen, Dylan, I'm assuming you're finished. Yeah, I'm so finished. <laughs> <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> Fatality. Shouldn't joke about that sort of stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Stephen, Stephen, how, how have you been? What have you been up to apart from jumping in to help out on Demon Souls a little bit? And give me loads which, of grass. Which, 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 which we'll get to. Yeah, I was giving Dylan lots of grass, lots of grass. Usually, and lots of usually when a man I, of Gulak gives someone someone else grass, it's a different kind of grass. Oh uh, yeah, gave him that full moon stuff. Yeah, Only no that stuff. Shit. None yeah. of that crescent or half moon shit. No, uh, I apart from working have been up with Team Souls. Oh, I played a bit of um, Death Loop yesterday. Uh, actually, I played a bit of it on my laptop, and it performed very well. Um and yeah, they have mines on the ground now that I keep forgetting about and constantly get fucking hit by them. So um, no, the, the range on those mines is pretty spectacular. Like there's some parts later on where you actually have to defuse them, and it's like you're literally like tiptoeing it because if you yeah. one step too far, boom. Yeah, and you think I would have copped on about the massive warning that they give you half a mile away from mm. one. But no, I just keep running straight into them. Like, oh yeah, that's a mine, and that's half my health gone. And then all the fucking eternal let's know where I am. Like, ah, oh, great, this this is turning shit. And then Juliana invades. Like, great, cool. And then I die. And then in one of the, I won't say much about it, but there's one of the um, visionaries who there's a countdown for for a particular area that I just was not paying attention to. I think I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's very loud and very obvious. But was I paying attention to it? No. Oh. So then Stephen died and had to go through another loop again. Um, but it's fun. Um, Is really it the best it. loop game you've played this year? God, no. Not even close. And don't get me started on that fucking nonsense. Jeff is in the bad books. In fairness to, in fairness to Jeff, he doesn't choose the listings. He doesn't, but he, he should have. He should know better than that. 
crazy. Should have curated that. I, I, couldn't be- I couldn't believe that it wasn't nominated. It's a shambles. Absolute fucking disgrace. But anyway, I won't get into that because I will get annoyed. Um, so other than that, then... Do you know, what? Do you know what? Actually, just to get into it for a split second. I can get over it not being nominated for Game of the Year because there has been quite a lot of really good stuff coming out that has come out in the last 12 months. The one that really pissed me off was that it wasn't nominated for Best Music or Score because the music in that is so intrinsic in everything that game does that it's like, seriously? <laughs> like, serious? <Yeah. laughs> but then again, Cyberpunk should walk away with that award just because of the sheer amount of original music yeah. and that was made for that game. Unless they don't want to award scumbaggery but that's a different conversation yeah but it did it did get it nominated for audio design and best which, action game and best action oh game. it was nominated for best audio design mm-hmm. ah okay that that's fair i can accept that i can accept yeah that, that okay i think i, that, I can accept that's a good that. one yeah I, okay um, they're, forgiven. they're forgiven it should it should win that one yeah because oh 100 no yeah like the 3d audio in that yeah, is it's, phenomenal it's, insane. it's the benchmark um yeah and definitely should win best action game. Um, the other thing that I did was I downloaded the Halo Infinite beta and have not played it. So I think I'm meeting up with, well, not meeting up, but one of the my friends that I chat to online, he uh, is big into Halo. So I think we're going to give that a go tomorrow night. Um, and then I it's was just like that loop, though, because you just have grenades everywhere. That's all I've seen Halo is people throwing grenades. And yeah, there's a there's an axe to it, and I have I never learned it. it. <laughs> yeah. No, John, yeah. John can throw a fucking grenade. He, but he does he show the... up to a raid hungover and then not do it? Still he a does. bit salty. Still, <laughs> still a bit salty about that. Not gonna lie. That's that's fair. <laughs> um, and the other thing I did this week was I actually bought some smart plugs. Oh. So I now have my kettle set up. To the smart plugs, I've got my bed warmer nice. set up. I've so got the hall, your hall bed lamp. warmer, yeah. So I'm it's seven o'clock warmer. in the morning. Stephen gets up at half seven. Does your kettle turn on at like 25 past then boil for half when you get up? I do have a set to a timer, but I can also just tell it to boil. But it is set up on a timer at the moment. Nice. So, uh, so I want to cool. backtrack a bit though is it your bed warmer or was it Deirdre's bed warmer that you inherited it was a bed warmer I inherited but not mine it's mine but I inherited it but not from Deirdre just pull another duvet on you man fucking hell can't get nah, bed warmers there top tier top can't bed warmers uh, okay. I, I'm not a big fan Deirdre? of it to be fair All right, it's for Deirdre because I hate getting into a warm bed yeah. So I'm always I'll get in and then I'll have like my legs hanging out until I'm cool again. But it, yeah, I'm I'm the kind of person I like a cold bed. I like to get warm. Like I like yeah. warming up. Yeah, I hate trying to. Cool I, I like I like to be the source of heat in the bed. That I get in and it's cold and then I maneuver the duvet around a certain way so that it gets warm with me in it. That's the yeah. You fucking Dutch oven the bed, don't you? That's what you do. Well, that's a different story altogether. I have a visit. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I just love the hand in the background trying to get the key. And <laughs> yeah. um, no, other than that, then uh, got told Diamond and Pearl was fucking delayed for me by a week. Call them up, and I might be getting it tomorrow. Hopefully, it's, I'd say you will. It's, it seems like yeah. they sort whatever problem they were having. I have a, a, a very attention-seeking visitor. <laughs> Hello. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> he doesn't. I was just out, out for a little while, so. Yeah, because they were very quiet on the the market in front today for the release. Like normally, games yeah, game stopped in very in your face. Yeah. No, yeah. nothing at all. Because what I did was, yeah, because that's what I did. I saw this, the tweet from Smiths, and I was like, "All right, I'll see how many they have in Tralee. and I said like fifteen plus. And I was like, "Fuck this!" So I rang GameStop okay. again and said to him, "I was like, look, what's the story with the." With the delivery, I said, did it come yeah, true? Yeah. I think it's Smith had them. And if I'm not getting it in the next day or two, I'm just going to come in and get my refund to go to Smith's. Yeah. Oh no, uh, the customs issue sorted. It, it should be here tomorrow. Give us, a, give us a call and we'll let you know. 
but I'm in tomorrow anyway, so I'll go in, and if it's not there, I'm like, right, refunds, I'm going to Smith's. Yeah, because I'm sure there is something with, like, a pre-order or a party or a TNC's that if it's not ready. Well, they have it that if you don't come in in two days, they can sell your copy. Your pre-order's so gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be a case that in two days I should get my money back. Yeah. Anyway, how about you, Kev? How's your week been? All I right. Licked I, the bits. After, I actually kind of regret that we did the Elden Ring, Elden Ring recording the night after our first play session. Because I think our opinions on it evolved over that weekend of playing it more. I think we both put in about 10 to 12 hours, maybe, maybe 50, a bit more. But I think as not, not that we were disappointed in what we played, but it just, we, we knew a lot more about it by the second or third play session. Yeah. We, um, we, uh, didn't know. Now I stayed up. Did, I did actually. the late sessions as well. I did the 3 AM sessions or whatever it was, 4 AM sessions. Um, yeah, it's just it was fantastic, but kind of spinning off that, I booted up Demon Souls again, which I had got about forty percent of the way through, I think. And then I was trying to think today, why did I stop playing Demon Souls? And it was because Cyberpunk obviously launched. Um, oh last, yeah, yeah, because the PS Five oh, wow. released November, November yeah. and then Demon Souls was with that, hmm. and then Cyberpunk was late December, Denver. so yeah. That, that's obviously why I stopped playing it originally. And then something for Destiny, probably. So, yeah, I've been smashing through Demon Souls this week. We were playing it together. Um, we've been playing with Dill a bit and helping him get to grips with that sort of stuff. We'll come back to that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I've got three bosses left. Yeah, I have three bosses left. I have to do World 5, 2, and 3, which obviously 3 is right after 2, so it's not like there's loads to explore there. Yeah. And I've cleared out World 1, 4, so I only have to do the boss on that, which is the final boss of the game. Um, so yeah, I've been smashing it out the last couple of days, especially just flying through bosses because magic is OP. Um, apart from that, um, did I play much else? I played a bit of Forza last week. Um, oh, yeah. I kind of booted up Forza on Sunday or Monday and just kind of went, yeah, I'm bored. And that's not a knock on the game. It's a fantastic game. It's just... And I think it's the reason that I'm not really interested in playing Halo, even though it's getting all these glowing reports and it's why I've kind of fallen out of Destiny's PvP or Apex. It's just doing the same thing over and over again. I just find a bit boring i guess it's the, it's the most simple term and that even in forza like the showcases in forza are fantastic we won't talk about that cheesy as fuck dialogue but um everything else is like you're driving a car you're doing a race and then you're doing another race in a different car and and it's just it's the same thing over and mm. over so i just kind of kind of enjoying doing different things um i have forza there up until february when game pass expires so I'll go back and I'll finish the showcases potentially, but kind of just bounced off it. Fair. Kind of knocking the game. Uh, but they had that dialogue so bad. Apart from that, I got Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes this evening and I'm at the first gym, I think. So oh, you played it already? Jeez. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I was playing it for a bit. Um, I, got, I chose the best starter and that is catching a... Um, fucking thing in the first area i can't shinx a shinx and going with an actual po a pokemon that actually evolves into something cool by the end of its thing say so, um, what starter did you pick i always pick the fire starter always doesn't matter if i like the fire i think starter chimchar is the best out of them yeah anyway this time yeah, yeah. In, yeah and polian's decent one now it's, it's the coolest looking one yeah, uh, I always pick the fire one anyway, just because I always have. It could be an absolutely crap Pokemon, but I'll fire up um, Diamond and choose the other two, and I'll trade them to one of you guys, and then you can trade them back to me, and then I'll make eggs for you, and everyone can have all the starters. But I, we'll do that when whenever I bother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apart from that, nothing really else to be honest. Just. Do you know what I did do this week, actually? Well, I did two things. One, I finished The Walking Dead, fully caught up. Oh. Ten and a half seasons. 
fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah. Did but they all good. die at the end? Is it finished now? No, there's still okay. like something like 15 episodes. I was going to say, is it worth February. playing the catch up game? It is. Yeah. It's very good. Um, okay. No, not Christmas Coke. Christmas Coke. Um, and I'm I started. I'm a firm believer Loki. that Christmas begins whenever the fuck you wanted to. Go on, Stephen. Sorry. I started Loki as well. Oh, you start on my how dog far in are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm two episodes into it now, but it's good. It's excellent. So you're scratching the surface of the what are they called? I'm gonna say the Minutemen. Where are they from? That's the uh, TVA agents, the Minutemen. Yeah. There you go. TVA. TVA. Um, no, so I'm watching it because I assume whatever happens in Loki will have implications for the likes of Spider-Man. Um, oh yeah, we got that or... trailer this week, which awesome trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely hiding stuff though. There's oh definitely... yeah, yeah. Did you definitely... see the Brazilian version. It's not in Brazil. No, not... <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Uh, did did the Brazilian show certain people? So in the brazilian version it didn't show people but it did show um lizard do you know that fight where you can see sandman end. lizard and electro going towards mm -hmm. uh tom holland you see lizard getting punched like his body um... like recoiling in a different direction and tom holland's like all the way up here so obviously it wasn't him i actually saw a really yeah. cool theory i think it might have been paris's theory I th i'm pretty sure it was paris um his theory is that you see the part where mj is falling that tom holland spider-man isn't gonna save her but yeah. well, uh, andrew garfield's one andrew does garfield will have his redemption for not rescuing emma stone's mj or not mj yeah. um yeah gwen gwen yeah yeah i know yeah, when i just thought i was like oh like, that's a nice little it's a nice little theory yeah yeah there's loads of them going around on TikTok at the moment. There's a few creators who um who who spin up all their conspiracies and shit like that. And some of them said like the same with like when Loki and One Division and that were on. Some of them actually sound better than what, what we actually what get. Yeah, and it's 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 why I try not to pay too much attention to it because you either yeah. end up too hyped or under hyped, and I just kind of I just kind of like approaching it as it is on the day that I go see it. We yeah, think it's going like, on for that next week, don't they? Uh, Monday, yeah. Monday. Um, it's the same with... I was just shocked that they didn't show the guys in the trailer at all because they held like a, a screening event in LA, like in a cinema, and mm. Tom Holland was there and everything. Like for a trailer, I this is that, like... Yeah. It's crazy, so I was expecting it. So it's, it was a little bit kind of like... There's eh, a lot okay. of hype for the movie. You just yeah. hope that that hype doesn't go against it. Well, I think it's going to be great. You just hope that people don't be like, oh, I wasn't what I expected. It's like, yeah, because you were fucking too hyped. Calm down. Mm. Then again, look, we didn't see anything for Endgame. And, That's true. You know, so. I so love Tom Holland. Nice not known. I think, I think great. Tom Holland's great. I think I'm Tom gonna, Holland's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to enjoy the film just purely because he's in it. Yeah, I think he's great. Um, I do think so, he's done, though. Mm. I didn't the couple a couple of weeks ago. Nah, Remember when that so. first stuff came out saying like mm. his contract and blah blah blah. But it does sound like he's ready to move on. And I, I was think I was only saying to Cathy, I was like, it feels like he's only started. But this is his third film. Yeah, it is. But he's still it's very solo young. Solo film, yeah. Yeah, but he's still very young, and I I always got the impression that he was <laughs> cast to kind of grow into it. If that makes mm. sense. And I, I don't think he's done. But his comments kind of contradict that and saying like if he's still Spider-Man when he's 30, he's done something wrong. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Like he, he publicly came out and said that maybe is, they I should go with When miles. he's 30, he'll still look like he's 21. That's true. Yeah. yeah. He probably is 30 now. We just don't know. He's going to be this generation Zac Efron. That's what he is. And then he'll just yeah, but we all like absolute him. tank. Yeah. Because he got his head in the game. Although, did you see he came out to say that uh, playing Nathan Drake uh, drained him? That yeah. he just did not enjoy the whole thing at all. Yeah, that really that whole, shows in that trailer. That whole fucking filming whatever 
movie making thing was a joke. Shambles from start to finish. Yeah. That was going to be a disaster. Do you think? Yeah. I I don't know. I think that falls into the category of people making it bad. Same with the the latest Tomb Raider. Like, I thought that was I, fine, If that's but... anything like the first one, I, I have no interest. I don't care if she works for Deliveroo, man. <laughs> but it's like, it has great foundations, but yeah, it's just it does, it's trying to do too much. And it's trying to appeal to and, yeah, like, that's that the thing. vast I think history it's trying in to, the game. It's trying to appeal to too many people, and it's trying to bring in new people. Whereas, like, yeah. we know the origin of Tomb Raider. We know the origin of Nathan Drake. Just give us... Pretend we know with a character, and then give yeah. that rather than trying to you know oh here's where they here's how they became that person. Which is why Spider Man done that. so well because we saw him getting bit by a spider fucking twice times. already. <laughs> we don't need to see yeah. it again. And and that's exactly I think it. It's actually appropriate for the conversation we're gonna have, but it's trusting that the audience already has it's trusting them that they already have the experience rather than spoon feeding them the, oh well here's how it all started and here's where it's going it's just trusting that your audience can Next put it together themselves instead of being spoon fed it's about being pistol whipped by the spoon mm-hmm. yeah that's where we're going now dill how's your experience of the old games being um so I'm gonna take you back to last week when uh, I started we'll start it. this. With, we'll say what game was our first Souls experience, and then we'll talk about that particular thing. So, Dill, yours is obviously Demon Souls. So, off you go. Yeah, I st- I, this is my third attempt at playing Demon Souls. Um, first time I went in. I d- do you know what it was? I know you just you've made comments about spoons and shit like that. I just had no direction. I was in the Nexus. I was told to go to this portal. And then I go to the portal. And then I get to the world. And I don't know what to do or where to go. Um, turns out I was spending hours in the one area. Going across the bridge where you get killed by a level 60 blah blah blah. When you're level fucking minus 4. And there's fog doorways. I didn't even know they were a thing. <laughs> so I was walking past the right way to go the whole time until I started playing with you guys. Um, so I had two failed attempts. Playing solo was very, very tough, I found, because this was my first iteration of these games. Um, the second time, more so, I took a little bit more time, which is what you're supposed to do, and it's the best way to enjoy it. The, not just rush in because I'm used to hack and slash and especially coming off just playing guardians where you just run in and spam abilities and um you you're not you're e- you're not easily one tapped um so where was I going with that yeah it was play, playing playing co op was it was a much better experience um it's it's like like you were saying kev you have to kind of re reanalyze your approach in these these kind of games um this is just normal outer world stuff not even the boss fights i'll get into that in a bit but this is just like normal stuff hurts you um i like i like playing games on normal mode <laughs> I, I i like a, a good experience not a hard experience and um, that's just how i like playing so this was a bit a bit outside my comfort zone but i gave it another chance because you guys were kind enough to replay and give me all the grass and better armor and better weapons and an actual fighting chance <laughs> so um yeah as we got into the swing of it and it took us through the, the level a bit more i actually enjoyed it because i wasn't just doing the same repetitive thing and getting killed by the same thing over and over and over um and that took us to our first boss fight which was the Failings. Failings fucking meatball guy yeah Meatballs. um the meatball guy which which you had to do solo by the way i had to do solo and yeah. that was my first kind of i think when i'd done it i was like two shots for three quarters of the fight so that was my first kind of moment where it was like right you hit you hide you rotate you hit you hide you rotate and it's just about finding those windows to get in and kind of 
you work it to your advantages rather or work it to your strengths rather than just stand there and block and hit and block and hit um which i i, I did i did have to say I, I was excited after that i i did i did enjoy it until you we just got have, the next boss. Yourself a little bit. <laughs> yeah like it, it was satisfying and i i do understand that that's where these games that's where you get your satisfaction is when you're dying on a boss over and over and then you eventually overcome it like i only died twice i think on that first boss before getting it done because like it was the first one so obviously it wasn't that challenging but um yeah i, I can see obviously that the, the harder the game or the the further you get into the game i'm sure the bosses get harder and mechanics wise gets a little bit less you can stand behind this and it's a weird one like because <laughs> Because Cause I haven't... A, at the beginning, it's it kind of eases you in a little bit. And then there's a real spike in boss difficulty. But then once you unlock some more powerful magic, the difficulty kind of falls away again. Yeah. Because magic in Demon Souls is just fucking OP as hell. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but you didn't help yourself by not having any magic, by the way. Because that first boss is completely weak to fire. So if yeah. you have any fire magic or anything, it just the health just evaporates. Just straight away, yeah. Whereas this kind of, I know that's like even co-op playing it with you guys. Like when we we're doing the was it the giant knight, and Stephen just <laughs> done a twirl. Even and I was taken aback. Even I was taken aback <laughs> by how ridiculous that was. You're so welcome. it's like, it's a it's whilst it's a, an experience and you're getting it done, it's still it's nice to get that actual souls experience where it's like you're gonna get hurt you're gonna have to think about the fight you can't just go in and expect to to be the first time and um, which i got that on the world dragon is that what it was called kev the red dragon Dra yeah. oh the fucking yeah the dragon god yeah oh, that's yeah. it dragon god um the flame lurker yeah yeah so we had to split up for that i think you just jumped off at that point Stephen. Um, and I, I, if Kev wasn't there, I would have rage quit because it was getting to that stage where I was like doing the same thing over and over and I was just, I couldn't seem to find a break in it. But then as soon as I found that break and I died on the next section, I could bridge that gap so quickly then. Like for something that I was struggling to get through to get to the next stage, I could do that instantly to get to the first ballista and then get down to the second one and then... Yeah, it was plain sailing. So it's it's just one of those things. I'm not used to that kind of approach to to fights. Not even boss fights, but just traversing levels and stuff, and not having that respawn point like right there. <laughs> You're gonna love Elden Ring. The yeah. respawn point and is right there. <laughs> that and that's that's one thing. I'm actually I was relieved when you said that because mm -hmm. that. By the time I eventually play Elden Ring, I'm hoping I will have finished Demon Souls and I'll be accustomed to that experience, so I won't be so reliant on that. But that's one thing now... I've actually noticed with Demon Souls, though, is that so Demon Souls, while it is the newest one, it's also the oldest one. It's yeah. a, it's the remake of the first one. So while some of the combats not are and the bosses aren't as. Uh... I don't know what way to put it. They're very simple. Like just they're very sim yeah, they're very simple. They're not complicated. Yeah. But I also noticed that the bonfires or the um, arc stones, as they're called in it, are there's mild. There's a, there's a long way to the next one. Where if you play Dark Souls, the later Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2 or 3, or a Bloodborne or a Sekiro, the shortcut to the bonfire is a much quicker route to get back to the boss than in Demon Souls. And I've noticed that a bit, that it is, while I think Demon Souls is the entry level for a Souls game, because there is cheesy ways to get through that game, which I'm totally taking advantage of myself, the, the actual bonfire, the checkpoint system, is the less user-friendly part, and that's something that they've made much more friendly as they've yep. made more games. Um, yeah. yeah. Because there is yeah. literally one arc zone. It's one per zone. level. Yeah. yeah it's so each, if you after die the boss, boss, isn't it? The yeah. whole fucking way, like yeah. it's. Yeah. Now there but, is some. There are some places where they've 
where you can open a shortcut, but it's still yeah, the whole way back. Them, it's yeah. still the whole way back. But like even the the last mission we played together, Kev, was where the wolves and There's the wolves are in the carriage yeah. at the start. The world one three. Yeah. And yeah. that shortcut was mm. drastic. Do you know that's we... that's the only one I can think of in the whole game that is drastic is in um after the tower night when you're working your way up the penetrator when you open mm. up that drawbridge it takes out a whole section yeah yeah because we were there for like half an hour i'd say mm. and then we had the ability to actually go back and spend our souls so, uh, to then go back and be in the boss fight within yeah. 20 to 30 seconds yeah so. and that that's what the later souls games are actually like that they have short every area has a shortcut like that and that's the secret to making your life a little bit easier is finding that shortcut, opening it up, and there you go. So, yeah. Like, I'm I was at, like, I don't know how to, I just, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I'm not apprehensive about the game. I, I like the way it looks and I like the way it plays. I just don't like how vulnerable I am all the time and how, like you said, there's only one bonfire each level. It's like, I've never, well, roguelikes like Returnal that was my first iteration of that and when you die and you go back to the start I'm kind of like have to do that all again so it's like, it's kind of that same aspect in this where it's like you die and you go back to the start and you're like I have to do that all over again and yeah. Yeah. but like that it's it's easier the second time and the third time and you know your route and one yeah. thing I did I'm... notice with you was that even <laughs> the, me and Stephen were there and we were managing um, the bigger enemies for you but you were still learning to block and dodge when to get in attack a couple times get out get your stamina back heal up like you were picking all of that up yeah yeah like it's yeah. I, I i think i would like to replay the bosses again to see if i could do it myself because like i'm enjoying the playthrough together but i would like to have that like the experience of like being one shot and you literally have half as hell to go and you have to kind of tediously time everything perfectly um for the for the real experience if you're gonna but, do that do not do it on a new game plus okay the 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 jump in difficulty from new game to new game plus crazy is uh, it's it's harder than going from start in new game like just build a new character spec with magic and go run through yeah, yeah. that's the thing I, like you, you didn't make your life easier either because no. you picked a character you picked a knight i think it was which has yeah. no magic and it also has the fat man role where yeah you, with, because you're at, if you have over 50 percent of your equip burden you do a really slow roll and cumbersome roll whereas yeah. if you have less than 50 it's a faster roll so you were See, this is the yeah. this is the things i mean like if i didn't have you guys to tell me that my game my ga experience mm. in the game would be drastically different mm -hmm. and that's the one thing i don't not that i don't like it's just i'm not used to i'm i'm used to being told if you want to play this way do it like that if you want to be a tank do this if you want to be a dps do this you know mm. so i'm actually gonna that's the perfect opportunity in edge magazine several years ago i'm gonna actually read a quote from it which explains the whole mentality behind these kind of games and it's the reason dark souls gives you so little help is because it's built on a single foundational principle that players are capable of anything it does not patronize you nor offers you to lower the difficulty it does not dare suggest a different tactic during a post death loading screen by telling you nothing it also tells you everything keep going you can do it and when you do the sense of reward will be staggering yeah and that's that sums up the whole genre of why it's so popular with so many people. Yeah, true. And whilst I like, I, I, ju I just don't think I would have stuck with it if it wasn't for you. Like, I, I don't think I would have bridged that fair. gap after the start. You know, and that's fair because uh, I was, I, I've been there myself a long yeah. time ago, but I've been there myself. Mm. But no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm enjoying the, the experience. I was like, even I saw you was on yesterday, I think it was, and I wanted to play it, but I was like, I, I haven't got the mental capacity for that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. And so um, I got... <laughs> it, it is one of those games, yeah, exactly. and I think. No, no.
that's probably why you struggled with first few times. It's like you have to be in a frame of mind to play that type of game because yeah. unless you understand how it works, there's a lot of learning. You have to learn to play the game on its mm -hmm. terms. And if you go in just being like, oh, just, you know, blast it out or do whatever, like you're going yeah. to get fucking wrecked and you're going to have a bad time. And you did that twice. Yeah, and you did it with a journal as well. <laughs> oh, the final. I have. Oh my God. So, Phil, you. Yeah. You learned two valuable lessons, or you should have, and you didn't. And that was fire hurts. So, the first time you're running away from the knights, and you panicked and you rolled into fire with little help, and it, it killed you. And I was like, okay, things happen. You learn not to go into fire again. The next time you go to get your souls, you have very little health. You jump onto the fire and die again. And I, I nearly pissed myself laughing, but you, you were ticked. You got so fucking tick yeah. over this. I, I had to stifle. I was like, if I start laughing, he'll fucking bite my head off. <laughs> but it was so funny. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, couldn't have happened at a worse time. You just were not in the frame of mind. And you were like, nope. Fuck this. And that and that's the thing, like it's so easy to just <laughs> skip past everything that you've learned and just just to try to get back to that state state of where you are. Mm -hmm. Whereas all you need to do is just take that extra second to just approach it a little bit slower. Um and it would have saved four thousand ex ex extra yeah. extra minutes there, yeah. Yeah. So but, would you you would go back now, like when you complete the co-op playthrough you'll go back and 100 percent like it, cry again especially i think where elden ring coming out has a big big thing to play in that because it's been one of those things that i've i've wanted to play for a while but this is kind of like an excuse to play it because i know how big elden ring is going to be and just to have that pre-knowledge of the genre like the art of from from the from soft kind of formula of like what to expect and how to approach things i say what you could do as well now is uh, the souls games are on sale at the moment in the playstation black friday sale yeah pick up dark souls 3 because that I would actually be imagine sorry just to come in on that if it's on sale on playstation i imagine it will also be on steam i have that on steam if you want to play through that there I reinstalled it today. I was tempted to buy. Oh, actually, no, I have. I don't need to buy it. Because I know, I, I know, I'm near the end of Demon Souls, and I still have that Souls itch, so I reinstalled yeah. Dark Souls Three today. It is and, not. And Dark Souls Three is it's kind of the more refined version Loki, of you're gonna have to stop now, Demon buddy. Souls. That's You'll enough. start to see the things like the, the bonfires no, being enough. closer, the combat staff okay. tighter. The quality of life kind of changes. Now, the bot, they're more difficult though, because they have phases and there's mechanics. And it, it is like it, magic is nerfed completely. It's essentially useless. Fuck all. Yeah. So, but what you have to do then is do what you did with Phalanx, which is take your time, find the patterns, yeah. keep a shield up, roll as you need to. And attack in the windows you have and that's the key and i think that's the key to playing any souls game is literally patience it's yeah. patience and a willingness to learn because you're going to fucking make mistakes but then you learn it from all of those mistakes and eventually yeah. you get to one like kev said it when we're playing elden ring and i've had it as well where you could literally go from the boss one shot on you or just put you in a loop of dying to Flawlessly killing that boss out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah I, I had taken the uh, tree sentinel. Yeah, like it just yeah, the it only reason I actually just... got hit was because the network frame drops. Yeah, and that that happens is just you just hit a frame of mind where you know the attack patterns. Yeah, and you just somehow manage to dodge everything or block at the right time. Yeah, and you come like out my with... the penetrator That's boss fight I sent you was a perfect example of that, Steve. Yeah, that I yeah, knew. You... I knew in his big lunge attack that I could get a couple of attacks in easily and i just wait for that single attack and then hit him and backed up and wait for it again and then hit him it yeah. meant my fight went on five minutes longer but it was safe and i've often done it with boss fights where i've just gone in on the basis that i'm just going to dodge or block where i think i need to to learn the patterns and find out where i can bait moves where i go oh i can punish this one 
And I might like I might do that four or five times and go, okay, I'm comfortable with the pattern now. So like I might for four or five times have a bit of a poxy run or not be leveling it's up. It's just your scout run basically. Yeah. When I'm learning that boss so that when I go in and I've got souls yeah. or when I'm ready to and fucking you know do what? it. Like... I think later souls games are more favorable of that tactic because in demon souls it puts you so fucking far back when you die hmm. whereas in yeah. later souls games it's i can just sprint to the boss room yeah, yeah exactly um but, go on no i was just gonna say it it it, it is i'm glad i waited for this mm-hmm. as an introduction because like visually it helps a lot with how it looks yeah um I got the, the the remaster itself looks looks amazing. <laughs> it's, it's an unreal remaster. In it's terms not. Of it's it's a remake. Quality. It's a full remake from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. True. They, they they remade the whole thing. It's not. It's not just a remaster. It's more. And that that's like to to listen to you saying that the newer games, but I I know they're older, but this is the the original one but like when i play the next variation whether it be dark souls 3 or bloodborne or whatever it's gonna look like the originals <laughs> because it is the oh, no. Bl- yeah. bloodborne is a good looking game still it just runs it, is, tr- really. it just runs at 30 fps okay um frame yeah. is fuck. dark souls 3 looks fairly okay it's not that old it looks fairly it's oh it's fine um, and yeah. Sekiro is a stunning looking game but that's probably that's the deep end and you can't get help in Sekiro it's you get fucking good there's no over leveling it's literally get good yeah <laughs> and that's why a lot of people didn't like Sekiro because it didn't give you that it was punishing yeah there was no oh you're struggling here go get leveled up a bit more and then come back and you'll be fine no no Sekiro is like no, get fucking good <laughs> yeah and I'll get into what I'm talking about my Souls experiences, but Sekiro was one of them where, because you and I played at the same time, 2019, Kev, I dropped it after a boss. There was one boss I just couldn't get, and I dropped it for a whole year. Then the pandemic and came it, in. It, I, it, did, it didn't help that I was like, that boss was easy, Stephen. What are you on about? Yeah, no, that, that, <laughs> is, that does piss me off a little bit, yeah. Um, but no, I dropped it for a year, and then went back a year later, and with kind of like fresh eyes and fresh minds i think you did it first like time third go. third go in third go yeah no i did the next one the ah. next version of that boss first time That's which is one everyone struggles with and i got it first time like that was grand <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so I think Anything that was else? um no that, that that was that that's my first experience and it's still ongoing as well which like my tldr is basically as a co-op experience, I'm loving it because having your guys' knowledge going into it is helping massively, like just in terms of what this boss is weak to or watch out for this specific pattern, like on the spider, like when he does the the tar um, kind of wave. Just, yeah, little things like that. Um or on penetrator, if he lights his sword on fire, watch out for it. Yeah. But, the, you can't but then I the had serious dodge. network problems and this is what penetrator did in on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you know Kev was on the end of it <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of just went if I don't if I don't do this this is going to be a fail so I just burned him in his fucking <laughs> suit <laughs> but yeah like as a co-op experience I would like to play the rest of the game co-op and then go back and try to revisit bosses as my own player leveled up and taken it in stages um but I don't think I've played it enough and have the qualities at the moment to actually play it solo and enjoy it. Like, I could struggle through it and could scrape through to another boss fight or whatever, but I don't think that's the experience that I really want at the moment, if that makes that's sense. Fair. That's fair. Um, until I get more knowledgeable of the patterns and the... Um, just on how to how to approach it and actually mastering the kind of like your blocks and your dodges and that kind of aspect. But I think as well what helps with Souls games is if you actually know what's coming. Sometimes yes. the hardest thing is where you just I'll get actually, caught off guard. 
Yeah, Dale, yeah. I'll send you a good website that it's it's Fextra's website that does mm-hmm. um breaks down the worlds, breaks down the bosses. And it's mm-hmm. not that it just it, it kind of just gives you information what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It helps. Unlike because me even stumbling that... into a boss fight with nothing on me, just stumbled right in. And yeah, then had and the that happens. <laughs> yeah. But even like that was kind of I was visually kind of taken aback from the first boss, the Phalanx, was it? I was just expecting like a knight or whatever like that, but there is this big kind of grotesque monster with oh, fucking wait, meatballs coming ones. off. Uh, and you're, but it's kind of like you, you're not expecting that, so that's one kind of shock aspect, and then it's like, mm. how do I navigate around this? And then that's another kind of um, kind of hurdle to face. So, like you said, yeah, if you know what's coming, it'll make it a little bit easier. <coughs> but yeah, nice block. That's that's been my uh, my first right. Souls experience. No, well, it's it's it's. I'm glad you're. In, I am glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Even if it took a bit of time, I'm glad you're enjoying it because I know at first you were kind of like, "Why do I fucking spend my money on this game?" Yeah, and it's one of those things I want to enjoy, yeah. but I can't force it at the same time. And I think by playing it co-op, it's help. It's easing it along rather than here's the deep end. Jump. I, I ironically, your real life experience with the game mirrors the in-game experience. You persevered. You went about it three or four times, <laughs> and then you got in. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, I get it now. Yeah, I was just scouting it out. That's all. Just scouting it out. Kev, do you want to tell us about your? Uh, first... you, you you go ahead first, Stephen. I'm curious about yours. Mine's probably far less interesting so i'll keep that for last because it'll be the shortest no that's fine and our bestie references silent hill in this <laughs> oh i thought you were gonna make no. a joke about me no he will though definitely actually i will not actually sorry silent hill. just to say it there was a fresh rumor this week about bloodborne on pc just for what it's worth oh. if that comes to pc yes oh we're all doing that yeah yeah together yeah 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 um, All in this together. Sorry, I dropped, check your... I dropped my escape key. Can't find it. Yeah, your escape key falls off. My D key falls off. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be in the middle of a gunfight in like trials, and my D I key found fall it. off. I'm like, I lost my D. My D is my D fell off. <laughs> my escape key. I need to clean no my keyboard. Um, I just want to go take. Uh, something for my throat just back in a sec no worries right Stephen go on then Stephen what was your first experience with a Souls game and why was it Dark Souls it was actually Demon Souls oh it was it actually the original Demon Souls okay, it I'm was actually the original Demon Souls I am Demon interested Souls. in this because my um, I didn't play Demon Souls so before he comes back I gotta see how long it takes him to notice I sent him a Steam key for uh, Dark Souls 3 <laughs> I actually do you know what because the way you gifted me, I was going to say Outriders, which it wasn't Outriders, I, I, except I actually want to ask you about that if I haven't asked you already. Um, you gifted me... Bioshock. Bioshock. My brain doesn't work sometimes. I was waiting to see what went on the Steam sale after 6pm today to see what was there. Um, but it was yesterday at 6pm. Today is Friday, so there's nothing exciting there. Also, your wish list on Steam is weird, man. For what I, I haven't updated my wish list. Yeah, I noticed. Ages. I noticed. I went to look at it. I was like, what the crap is this? Anyway. I know. My wish list is more of a thing of like, was this a game that I was interested in years ago? Maybe. Oh, well. Anyway, go, um, um, yeah, go so... speak to you about the original experience with Demon Souls. Way back in 2009? Nine. Because I remember it because I was working in game in Northside at the time. (laughs) Do you know what? Actually, I miss my local GameStop. I said it to you today. I miss my local GameStop after dealing with the ones in the shop that I got my Pokemon games in today. The level of customer service from the shop that got closed down, my local one, like those guys were fucking brilliant. They always went out of their way for you even when they didn't have to when my last of us collector's edition got delayed last year which sucked by the way it happened but the manager of that store chased that down for me and made sure i got it within a week 
He also mm. gave me a copy of the game to play if I wanted to while I waited for it, which he didn't have to do. Because I hadn't paid off the whole game, I literally paid off a tenner of the game. But the ones in the other store, just it's just not the same level of... Oh yeah, yeah we'll start yeah. that effort. It was kind of like, oh yeah, our, the, the delivery's coming. We don't know what time it's coming at. Um, we think three or four. I was like, oh, will I get a phone call? Oh, we haven't decided if we're calling people yet. I'm like, surely people want to know if they're fucking pre-orders. It's just the level. So I really hope the people that worked in the Santry store, which was my local one, I really hope they all fell, landed on their feet somewhere because they fucking deserved it when this store got closed down. I hope they all got a job in head office and they're all on nice and money now, but, but they're probably not. They probably don't work for GameStop anymore. Anyway. So my first experience with Souls games. <laughs> so Did you I fall nothing, asleep? <laughs> no, you missed nothing. <laughs> no, I was. Ba- Stephen said he used to work in game, and I booed him for doing that. Um, and then he went on a tangent to Souls. Then I went on a tangent to just say that I really missed the guys that worked in the Santry GameStop that got closed because they oh, would yeah. always go out their way for you. Whereas the ones in the stop in the GameStop that I got my Pokemon games in today. They kind of just went, yeah, you call us. It, it, you want your game, you work for us. Like, mm. I tried calling them four times today. They're shocking. They're, they're yeah. so bad. Anyway. So, as I was saying, my first Souls experience was the original Demon Souls in 2009. When I worked in game. Because I remember it because the game came in and I had the shiny, we had the collector's edition. Which had like just a the paper, do you know the games used to come in the paper um, things and you'd get like an extra art book with them and oh yeah um, so it came with that but it was the same price as the regular one and then I got a staff discount of 25% so I got nice. the game for like nice. 3750 so I was like I was like oh this is an action game looks hack and flashy like this looks grand I'll pick that up so I picked it up and do you know the first like the, where you first the art shown you come in in Boletaria and there's a couple of enemies that jump out. They jumped out and killed me instantly. I was like, all right. I think, yeah, me too. This, this is interesting. <laughs> so I went out and did it again. And same thing happened. I got a couple of hits in and it killed me. And eventually I managed to work my way through the, the level up to the red light where you kept getting stuck on. I got there and went, well, this enemy's too fucking difficult. And went another way and found a fog wall and went through it. I was like, oh, okay, this is grand. And I just kept getting killed and killed mm. and killed. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not interested in this game. I don't like a game that basically is punishing. And then the health mechanic, so like where your health goes to 50%, then it's all yeah. form. I was like, yeah. no, I was like, fuck this game. I was like, I'm never playing another game like this ever again. So I went back into work the next day and I traded it in, got back 30 euro or something or more. And I never touched a sold game until 2015, I think it was. Um, maybe a little bit earlier than that. But what happened was um, IGN had um, the Prepare to Try series came out with Rory, Krupa and Gav and it was but a Dark Souls noob complete the original Dark Souls before Dark Souls 3 came out. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I was watching, you know, this Dark Souls noob play it, and he struggled like me at the very start, and then eventually got better. I was like, oh, I was like, this looks interesting. Like, when you get into it and understand it, it's like, yeah. this looks interesting. So um, a friend of mine, when I was doing my PhD, was also watching the series. Like we didn't realize we were about watching together until he came in one day and I was supposed to be working. I was watching the latest episode. I was like, oh do you watch that too? So we were like, you know what, fuck it, we'll I had my gaming PC in in work. I was like, fuck it, I'll buy Dark Souls and the two of us will play through it. So we take turns when whoever would die, you'd swap the controller over and just during lunches we worked our way through the whole game. And um we completed it that way and that was so like you i had that co-op experience first but it was yes. one-on-one so i would get a certain amount in and then dave would take over and You'd pick up that dave, progress dave might get further or dave might kind of die at the start and it's like okay so we'd figure we'd figure out who was better at, at certain areas and then we go oh look i'll take this area you take the next one and um 
yeah and just learning boss fights and stuff so we, we had that even like we were sharing the knowledge with each other he's like oh why don't you try this and like oh yeah that's a good idea so my first proper experience was a co-op ish experience and after that then i was hooked i was like all right i i know actually you know what no sorry i take this back that was my first where i got into it i had one other soiree into souls games which was bloodborne and bloodborne nearly broke me i nearly quit gaming in general because i just couldn't fucking get it and it was pissing I, thought, me no, off. I was the only one that had thoughts like that no it was you know in the first area so you go out and you walk up to the first uh lamp lights and you light and then you go down and there's like a couple of enemies but then you go into the main area and then there's like eight fucking enemies in the one area there's eight enemies in the one area and there was no way to break up the pack where you could like take them one on one it would just come at you and i just couldn't get past them and i spent like a night or two this is when extra vision was around i rented the game and um Spent the night or two trying to get past that and I couldn't. And then returned it. Got it again a week later. It's like, I have to fucking try this. And made it all the way to the cleric beats the first boss. And he just fucking wrecked me over and over <laughs> and over. And I just went, no, I'm not good enough for these games. I'm done playing these games. And then I thought of the series prepared to try. I went, okay, it is possible because this guy, Rory, like, the hardest game he have, he's ever played was The Legend of Zelda on normal difficulty. So, like, if he can fucking do it, like, I can do it. But I thought Elden Ring was The Legend of Zelda of Souls game. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> Breath of the Wild Souls edition. That is. I've actually genuinely yeah. seen Halo Infinite be called uh, Breath, of, Breath of the Wild of Halo. What? Nah, the reference was it's more Breath of the Wild than Far Cry. Which, that's fair enough. Because people were saying it looks very like a Far Cry. All right. Anyway. So, yeah. So, my proper first completion of a Souls game was co-op. And then Dark Souls 3 came out. And then I picked up Dark Souls 3 straight after that. Got into it. Completed it. Picked up Dark Souls 2. Hit a fucking struggle bus with that. Because that is not the same as any other Souls game. Got through it eventually. Um... Then went back and did Dark Souls 1 again. Then I said, right, it's time to fucking pick Bloodborne. I have to get through Bloodborne. Picked it up, full price, still. This is like three or four years later. That shit had um, fucking value, yeah. It did. Picked up for full price and again, fucking struggled because there's no shield. So you're not learning the, sh the, the shield block. You're learning to parry with a gun. And it took a while, but once I got it, I loved it. Like it's, it's probably my favorite one. Um, but it's, it's so different to the rest of them. And then that broke him out. And, and Stephen got broken all over again. <laughs> that I breezed through Sekro for the first couple of hours because it was all about parrying, and I'm decent enough at parrying, so I could. Once I learned yeah, how to do the parrying, deflects, yeah. Once I learned how to do the deflect properly and that you could basically deflect anything, I was like, okay, I can do this. So I got into it pretty quickly. But then I came up against L Father, the original L, and he just fucking tore me up. I just couldn't beat him. And I quit the game. Just straight up. I was like, I'm done. I can't do this again. I was like, this is another one of those where I'm just not going to get it. And touched it a year later. Beat Owl on the third try. Beat the harder version of Owl first try. Because I had gotten so used to his moveset that I just knew what to do. And yeah, Sekiro is up there as one of my favorite games of all time. It's such a well put together gold game. And yeah, I, 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 went, like, I went from having the initial Demon Souls of I'm never touching a fucking game like this ever again to full full ball in it into the from soft games like i love them all and even though they still throw up a challenge for me every so often it is that initial that that part of where you break through the challenge and come out of it the other end you go yeah i did this like and as the games have gone on they've gotten better with telling you what to do and kind of 
not holding your hand, but giving you guidance in the game, the game mechanics of, look, this is how to parry or in Sekiro, the deflect is basically your fucking bread and butter. And, you know, it shows you some of the more obscure stuff that you're like, you need to master this. And by mastering this, the game becomes accessible. Um, but yeah, it's just once you learn the formula to a Souls game, it, you, if you enjoy it, you'll, you'll really enjoy it. And it's that, yeah. that rush of you beat something that has towered over you for the last hour or more. And that's satisfaction. And it's what I keep coming back for. It's the, because I don't like hard games. So to get through a game that I know is hard and not a lot of people are able to play and overcome that gives me an extra bit of like, yeah, I actually am decent at playing games. Like it, I might not be good at fucking PVP, but like these hard games that other people just won't touch. It's like, I can get through them. I'll struggle, but I'll get through them. And um, yeah, it's, it's been an, not an addiction since, but. I do look forward to the next from releases and Elden Ring has me stupidly excited. Like it's unreal. I just hate that I have to wait till February. I think that's the thing with a from software game that even if you're you shy away from the challenge and like that, there's no denying that when from software release a game, it's gonna be a fucking good game. Yeah. Like there's they, 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 issues. they, they make like, they make games their way and mm -hmm. that's not welcoming to everybody. But it's still, it's a well-polished, well-oiled machine that works the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Like, like to me, that's the bit... Go on, Dill, sorry. Uh, I was just saying, like, that's the bittersweet kind of thing. Just exactly how you described that there and, like, what you said, Stephen. That as soon as you break that wall to understand how to actually approach the game. And, like, like you said, once you, got, once you get that knack down, it's so easy. It's kind of like, until you get to that moment, it's horrible. So like, every, like you're thrown so much at it, and until you break through that and get that um, mechanic down, or get that kind of what were they called? There, if you break through their rotations um, to get to do damage or whatever, until you do that, it sounds like a completely different game. <laughs> like, like there you go. You've you shied away from it for a year for Sekiro and then like Bloodborne was horrible but when you broke that it was your favourite thing ever yeah and that's that's the one bit of advice I give to anyone who's looking to play them is you just have to pers persevere the two things you need in a Soulsborne game are patience and a willingness to learn yeah. if you can do that you can you can beat the game because you the game to, asks, you need to want to do it yeah because yeah. I think we're so used to games and holding us and telling us what to do and rewarding us when we do the most basic of things like, oh, you've unlocked a healing item. Here, let's upgrade it. It's so much better. In so oh, like, now it's you, you, oh, you unlocked a healing item. Here's one plus one level on your battle pass. Yeah. Or if you're Halo. No, sorry. What's what's a level? You've got to do extra shit. Um, but yeah, like Souls is it's it's punishing. It's it says you die, touch it. There's half your health gone. Good luck next yeah. time and but in doing that it makes you more cautious because you're like i only have half health those things that who shot me are now going to one shot me so you learn to be more cautious which means you're taking your time which means the next time you go through it with your proper full health things aren't a problem you're like i don't need to worry about this anymore yeah um but it's yeah it it's very punishing and thankfully there's things like in demon souls there's the cling ring to bring it to 75 percent health and um stuff like that but that's still something that puts me off playing games is that punishing mechanic which is why i didn't play returnal initially because i was like i don't want to lose everything on death why that's not fun yeah but sometimes you just have to take the dive and trust that the developers know what they're doing and that it works for a game and from self know what they're doing and house mark knew what they're doing with returnal as well so and that's that's something that i was only thinking about you today it was like to me, your game experience is personal. Like, what you get from a game is something completely different to what someone else will get from it. But it looks very... With with the FromSoft games and just the Souls kind of genre, it's like, we want you to experience this in a certain way. So you have to kind of 
change what you want out of the game because we're going to give you that in a certain way and you're going to enjoy it. You'll fucking you love fuck, it. You better but, fucking but that, yeah. it. That's yeah. the thing. There's no, there's no kind of... It's, it's that one kind of route Did, through it. I have a question for you then. You, you may answer this, whatever. If you could include a difficulty slider in Demon Souls, would you? I don't know. Cold magic. See, this, this is the this no, but in the, general, in general. That's what I was gonna. I was gonna get around to in a while, and I was gonna pose the question of: Do you think it is because, like, I like my action adventure games, like I like that kind of genre where it's it's easier. It's it's hand not handheld, but you have direction. You have not um. What what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Um. Uh, Forgive his one brain. Mistake. He's very sick. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. one one mistake isn't gonna jeopardize like what you've yeah. done for the last forty minutes or so. I was trying to say that in a different way. Um, but do you think it's because we're so used to those kind of games that when these games come out as seldom as they do, that people aren't ready to approach it in the way that you have to? Like, like I was saying, if if you weren't there the day in VC, Kev, I would have rage quit from the Demon God. And if I had a slider, would I have dropped it down a level? And I probably would have, but yeah. now that I understand how the games work and how they're supposed to work to a fraction of my knowledge of them at the moment, I don't want to. I want it to be that experience because like you said that's the enjoyment you get from it like the excerpt that you read out earlier on that's the way they make it that's the experience they want you to have and like you were saying perseverance it is possible so if it's possible you'll get it eventually it's i think the argument i think the argument for having an easier difficulty and they've done it in different ways they've done it in that bonfires are more regular or etc whatever Elden Ring just multiple ways they've done it but I think the argument for making giving the option to make it easier is that more people would play the game or experience the game but from the developer side of things I think they're perfectly fucking happy with how many people experience the game because it's the experience they want people to have now there is always an argument well shouldn't gaming be for everybody or shouldn't everyone be able to experience it and that's that's a moral question i guess that it's again it's up to the developer to make it and if the developer want to make a very curated experience to a very specific group of people like <laughs> They're not, my argument they're, they're not lying to people and saying, no, this one's way more accessible. Or this one's way easier. Buy our game. Give us your money. They're not saying that. They're saying, no, we're making this game for the people who want us to make this game for them. And if you want to be part of that, we'll welcome you with open arms and people will help you and give you tips and give you advice and even kill a boss for you here and there. But if you want to embrace that, what we're giving you, then welcome. We want to have you. But if you don't want to embrace it, we're perfectly happy to let you not be part of it because we've got a very committed and loyal fan base that love everything we fucking do. And they're the people we're making this for. And I think that's why From Software are held in such high regard because they respect their player base. Mm. They know what their player base want and they make the game for that player base. Look, at, I think Destiny is actually a very good example of this. Destiny 2, when it launched, they tried to make that game be... They tried to make that game have a little bit for everybody, where unfortunately that just doesn't work. If you make a game that's a little bit for everybody, it's not everything for somebody. Where if you know what your market is and what you're targeting, and you make the game that they want to play, you're going to have a very fucking loyal fan base who will then go to their friends and say, buy this shit, it's amazing. Whereas if you can't... And it kind of takes away from it as well. It does, it does. Like if you when came you hear to that kind of Destiny Two launched, I wouldn't have been able to recommend it to somebody because yeah. there was there was some redeeming factors, a lot of redeeming factors, but it wasn't that hardcore. If you come and say, "Oh, I really want to play 
a, a, a Souls game, would you recommend it? I'd say, well, absolutely. But there's a yeah. disclaimer that you have to know about before getting in. And and that's that's a like it's there's no right answer or right way like you're saying about the accessibility for or that um not accessibility the bringing the sliders or whatever into the game it's like should be played by everybody but at the same time it's the type of game that it is like horror games you're not asking people who develop horror games to make it make less, it less scary, scary because <laughs> they don't like scary things it's yeah. like when you say that out loud it sounds not stupid or ridiculous but it's kind of like we're making it for a specific player base who enjoyed this kind of thrill who enjoyed that and are seeking that out you can get your kicks in other genres and other ways of playing in in other games but this is what we're making and as someone who likes easy games i understand the souls um mentality of this this is our game this is how we make it you play it or you don't and obviously it's not as finite as that like <laughs> games are art as well and the people who make them are artists and yeah that's they have a combined sure. vision and yeah. it doesn't matter like what we think if there are people out there willing to pay for it and they're happy to take that money and only that money well then they're more they're they're perfectly within their right to do that and go yeah if our market is half a percent of the total population of gamers but it makes we're it sustainable okay and we get to do what we want we're perfectly happy we're not ea we're an activision where we want 100 percent of everyone's money and then so yeah. you know it's it's we're a we're very it, yeah yeah we're making what we're we're doing we're happy we're sustainable and they pump out bangers every single time i also think that if if there wasn't a demand for it you wouldn't see yeah other game like it made its own fucking genre it's yeah, like yeah. The, the, i don't know if you did the the um the questionnaire the survey for the for the game for yeah. elden ring like it's just like mm -hmm. what kind of games do you play action adventure rpg da da da, da. soulsborne soulsborne <laughs> it's like Imagine. it's a little genre and there's so many games that have been made for that genre because there's a demand for them yeah. and if, if there wasn't a demand for them you wouldn't see other games you just wouldn't yeah it's like it's like everyone's like how many different developers have tried to make a destiny like game because there's a demand for that none of them yeah. have been necessarily successful because there's something about destiny that makes it what it is but there's a demand for it if i'm, I'm trying to get the example if there was a, if there was a type of game that people didn't want you wouldn't see other games in that genre or similar to it because people wouldn't want it's if, like, people don't, if there's no market there's no market <laughs> it's the simulator games like we have a farming simulator game yeah what the fuck and we've truck simulator and train simulator don't forget to go the ghost simulator i bought that so i'm one of those people but do you know what i mean there's a demand for niche games and if you have that and you develop a good game people will buy it and as long as you're true to yourself and that core value like if you tr develop a train simulator and then your next one is train simulator but it's actually something completely different you're gonna piss it's them sponsored off sponsored by thomas <laughs> sponsored by the fat controller <laughs> e here e you have not it's in the you haven't said about your time. fucking yeah I'm not, experience yeah well. we're, we're going off on tangents if you'd like to do that well my first one would have been dark souls the first dark souls back when it came out i'm gonna say 2011 yes i i yeah. played i think i bought it out of my christmas money that year i am um, i oh, i went in like 10? 2011 i was 17 so yeah Close. i get i get away with it by default <laughs> no i actually i actually saw the picture on facebook recently it was i bought dark souls um the whatever battlefield that battlefield 4 i think it was three or four I, I bought like several games and got them for christmas and had them all laid out and probably finished four of them out of eight or nine but anyway yeah i i went i knew what dark souls was i'd read oh it's this really hard game and it's really difficult and you have to if you die you lose all your upgrade stuff and i said you know what i'm gonna give it a shot because i want to be part of that it sounds cool i am um, i didn't get to the second i got to the second bonfire and then never got past that because 
I wasn't willing to embrace it. I started it up, I played, lost all my souls, went back to get them, got didn't get them, got annoyed because I didn't get them, then stumbled into the fight on the bridge, I can't remember what, what it was against, and read, oh, if you jump up, if you climb the ladder and jump down, then it does lots of damage, tried to do that, it didn't work, I died, and I was like, you know what, this isn't for me. And I bounced off it for quite a long time, and I know why I bounced off it now, because I wasn't willing to be patient and take my time. I went in I, I went in approaching it like an Assassin's Creed game or something like that, where it's like, oh, I'm getting my story, and the combat, I can make it a bit harder if I want to, but it, it, it's just giving me the story, and everything else is the spoon to feed me that story, whereas in a Souls game, the gameplay is the experience. Everything else around it is just supplementary to it, but the actual gameplay is the main. It's it's the steak. It's it's the meat of the of the meal. Um. So I bounced off it for quite a long. I didn't play the second one then, and it was only when Bloodborne was coming out that I had a friend who was big into Souls games. Like, ah, oh, you should check out. I'm playing Bloodborne. It's amazing. Look, and I I had watched trailers and thought, yeah, that's amazing. But it's it's a Souls game, so it's not going to be for me. Um, he wouldn't stop talking about it the same way I burned everybody's fucking ears off about Destiny. And eventually I was coerced into buying it. And I started playing it. I'd, I'd read some articles about Bloodborne after launch and how highly it had been rated. And I, th I think it was in the PlayStation magazine talking about the shortcut for the Cleric Beast that when you get to the bridge, loop back around and open the gate because you can get back there quicker. So I took my time going through that first area, the part Stephen spoke about where there's all those enemies. Found it manageable because it was... I think that was the other part that maybe turned me off Dark Souls originally, was that it didn't feel AAA. It felt, while it was on the PS3, it looked like a late PS2 game in some ways. That's probably yeah. an unfair. It was more like a PS2.5 maybe than PS3. Or not PS2. But... That turned me off it, whereas Bloodborne is an absolutely fucking stunning game. Yeah. Like, even it still holds up apart from the 30 FPS. But I took my time going through it. I thought, right, Luke loves this game. I want to I want to feel the same way about this game as he feels about it. Um, the Cleric Beast kicked my ass for a couple of hours, and then I started to get through it. That camera, man. Oh my god, that camera. But I then started to get through it. I started to study those attack patterns, learn, okay, I've got a gap where I can get in there, got a tell down halfway, got cleaned off that bridge. But because I had that shortcut really close, and I can get straight back to that boss fight really quickly, pick up my souls, and go again. And eventually, I got through the boss fight, got through it, and went, I, I feel like I get it a little bit. And then, I kind of played Bloodborne semi-co-op, in that, some bosses I do by myself. If Luke was on, I would. He would jump in and we play together, and he'd tell me, "Ah, this is where we're going. This is the next boss fight," mm. and he'd help me. But if Luke wasn't on, I wasn't afraid to fire it up by myself and try and make some progress. So I think I probably did it about fifty-fifty. Um, nah, and I became absolutely fucking just obsessed with Bloodborne. I'd known that um Father Gascoigne that if I did the whole thing with the, the, bell. the music box, the bell, oh, yeah. that you can turn them back to human. I think you can turn them back to human form. Or you can control... I can't remember. You can distract one. them for you like 10 seconds or something. Yeah, you can distract them, which means you get, can get the damage in. Um, so I got through Father Gasco, and actually, I, I got through it. I think it was my first attempt. I actually managed to get through him pretty quick. And I was kind of like, oh, I got a feel for this. I understand how this is... Yeah, and of course, I got fucking farmed by bosses or enemies at certain points in that game, because you're going to. But Bloodborne really got its teeth into me really quickly. And while I had that experience with Dark Souls a few years earlier, and just bounced off it because I wasn't willing to... I didn't want to embrace it. I just kind of went, ah, you know what, it's not for me. I'll just go play Assassin's Creed, because whatever. I was a bit younger. I didn't really... I just played the big AAA titles of the year. I wasn't really willing to embrace it. But when Bloodborne came around, because of the weirdness of it and the aesthetic, it, and 
Souls games do this thing where the f- story isn't really shoved down your throat. It kind of mm-hmm. gives you snippets of the story, and then you pick up the rest of the stuff from the items you pick up in the world. Or from talking to an NPC. You, you pick up a little bit. It's not really shoved in. But I was just really got just obsessed with Bloodborne and getting through it. And some stuff I was able to do by myself, no problem. Some things, Luke would come in 10 levels above me and just fucking clean house. And I'd be like, oh, there was a boss there two seconds ago. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I just yeah, I just became obsessed with Bloodborne. Uh, ended up platinum in it in the end. Um, Did you? Oh, I platinumed it, yeah. And I'm. Jesus. I was stubborn about it that that last boss fight. I can't think of the name of it in the dungeons. Um, oh, um, the Sumerian Queen. The, yeah, Sumerian Queen. I was stubborn about it. I was getting through that dungeon by my fucking self. I was earning that, and that was that wasn't too bad. The fight before that with the was it the flame dog. Yeah, the oh, that no, was he, he was a headless. He was like a headless dog that would spit yeah. poison at you yeah. or something. Yeah. He was tough, but yeah. I was stubborn. I got through it and I got my platinum, and that was really like I, I fucking I get what FromSoft do. I love what they do, and I can't wait. I'm gonna buy every fucking game they make because I love what they do. They were, and th- like. It wasn't then until Sekiro came out. When Sekiro came out, and you couldn't over level, and you couldn't OP ability your way through most of it, mm. it was literally get good, or you're not getting through this game. It was like I, I'm getting through this fucking game. It's the challenge. But yeah, Sekiro was the one that really just cemented how much I love these games. But yeah, Bloodborne was. My first real experience where I actually fully embraced it, fully got through it, learned the bosses. With a bit of help in some places where he'd be like, oh, this boss does this. And even if he wasn't with me, he's like, oh, your next boss is mm-hmm. whatever. He's, he does this, be careful of that. So I had a bit of help. But I did most of it. I did a lot of hard ones by myself. I think what actually happened a lot was he joined in with me for the start of the level. And help me get to the boss, and then I do yeah. the bosses by myself because I wanted to experience. I want to do the hard parts by myself. I want to do these, yeah. do these bosses by myself. And um, I can't think of the guy's name up on the roof. He was another one who kicked my ass. For oh, uh, Martyr Logarius. Yeah, Martyr Logarius. Where again, I he saw kicked you, my you ass. Yeah. With him up on that Facebook was the recently. Sl- sloppiest fight I've ever done, but got through it. Um, but yeah. So, Dil, what we're saying is, it doesn't get any easier the more you play it. Do you know what, what I though? took away from both your instances <laughs> is that I'm just ten years behind. Like I'm, 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 about a, five I'm on years. About five years. Like but I'm on trajectory what, right? to enjoy it. <laughs> on the, yeah, that makes sense. But like, Bloodborne was my first, which would have been 2015. That's my real first one where I really embraced it, and then after that, I kind of went and dabbled in the other ones, but. When Sekiro came out, not not to sound arrogant or big headed, but I didn't find Sekiro necessarily hard. Like it was challenging, and it was get good and learn to fucking parry properly and all that. But because of the because of Bloodborne, I found Sekiro a lot easier because it was like right i know what i know what i'm facing i know it's going to be a challenge i know there's going to be hard bosses i know there's going to be some that i can bullshit a little bit um i can't think of the one where you could just stand up in the tree and then jump on him then shoot back up into the tree oh the monk the, the monk yeah was monk just old mo- monk. ancient old monk or something which they fixed that now sorry Dil. but um but for the most part like i didn't find sekiro hard there was challenging parts of it but because of what i've done in bloodborne and what i've done in dark souls 3 i went all right i know what i'm up against i'll learn the systems i'll i'll play it on its terms i'll be patient i'll learn attack patterns i'll learn when to do like for example when they go for a a prod attack and it flashes red Mm. you dodge towards them because then you stamp on their weapon and then you can you stagger them this is an example of lots of the nonsense in Sekiro, but 
I appre what I appreciated about Sekiro was there was no getting past it by cheesing it or over leveling. It was literally just learn, learn how to deal with this shit. Figure something out, go with it. If it doesn't work, try figure it out again. And it was also single player. I need to point I out was, that yeah, like there was no, there's no co op at all. So it was get good, and that's what made me quit was because. I couldn't just say to Kev, I was like, look, I'm really struggling with L. Come in, either give me advice or just fucking help me co-op this cunt yeah. and then I can get on. And like, that was the only one that I really and truly struggled with. If I'd gotten past L, okay, I probably would have struggled on the next version of L afterwards because I didn't learn them. Mm. But the rest of the boss is like no issue at all. Um, and Do you know what else just... Sekiro was for me? It came out not that long after I'd made the transition to PC. So I was also playing this game mouse and keyboard, which is Yeah, which is insane. Which is the crazy way to do it by the way. Like it's not the recommended way. Like it's from soft games say to you recommend it as controller yeah. and this <laughs> motherfucker uses keyboard and mouse. But because of that, if you watch my clips compared to Steven's clips, we have very different play styles. My playstyle was get in, do some hits, run away, get a, get my stagger bar down, get my health regen, get in again. So half of my boss fights were the boss was chasing me across the map. <laughs> and if you watch the way we were playing Elden Ring last week or playing Demon Souls, that playstyle has transitioned into it for me. Whereas I I'll back away and back away, and I'll make the boss come to me. Whereas Steven's the opposite. He kind of goes to the boss and pays the Again, price sometimes. Face. But also, it works. It's the ri You play the risk-reward game where I play it safe. Yeah, I play to learn the, the attack pattern so that I can dodge at the right time. and I find the attack that I can get in on. I'll, I'll, yeah. find, what, I'll find the attack I like best to um, punish. Combat, yeah. to punish yeah. And that's how I'll play it. And that kind of, and that's from. the way the games are meant to be. Is that you find what works? Like, deal, like deal. I'm, this is gonna sound terrible, but you fucking really made a meal of that dinner, that phalanx yeah. fight. Like, that that went on for fifteen minutes, and it was painful to watch, but it was effective because it was you painful just... because I thought you were gonna get clipped in the back of the head at any moment by a projectile you yeah. yeah you do not look at the boss at all which is terrifying because you're just running around and there's projectiles coming behind you but you don't see them because you don't you're not looking at the boss because if you I, stop you die <laughs> and that was the one difference in that when if you look at the clips where i'm running around i'm still locked onto the boss yeah. and watching what that the boss was is doing i, could, at all I couldn't times. do that yeah I, I thought that was very um overwhelming especially yeah. when it wasn't just the boss that was moving around it was yeah. his mm -hmm. little meatballs like if they weren't there i could probably stay locked onto the boss yeah, but it's, it's the, the only fact... boss that has them really so yeah but what i was saying was like it worked like what you did worked you found a pattern that you could punish yeah and you did and that's what the game is about is like whatever your place that is way. it's yeah life uh finds a way finds a way but it's that's oh, what oh that makes that rhyme is something funny loki wouldn't but... go to the toilet last night so i fucking kylo around his ass so uh, what was it like, finish what you started no yeah. it was, <laughs> i know um... what i have to do but i don't know if i have yeah. the strength to do it <laughs> i was like come on loki you know what you have to do i know you just don't have the strength to do it and then he went for a wee it worked uh... <laughs> um what was i gonna say before that um this was, at four, this was at 4 a.m. when I woke up on the sofa, by the way. God. No, I know it was a bit, I was giving out about your failings and how it works in the end, and that's what it's about. But it's there was something else. Um... Oh, it was something about uh, Kev's fucking... Oh, no, I remember what it was now. I think another difference between you and I, Kevin, how we play is you play locked on to the boss. I don't. Yeah, I lock on to everything. That's how I was taught I will, to play. And that's how I was taught to play as well. And then Bloodborne got me out of it because all the enemies in Bloodborne are about five times your height. <laughs> so I wasn't able to track them because I would be in close. So I couldn't track them properly. Ah, so I had to lock off. Yeah. So I learned to stay locked off. But I also think, and I think, Dill, you probably have this as well. 
Monster Hunter, how do you fight the enemies? Yeah, I'm not locked on. I think it's a Monster Hunter habit as well, is that you just don't lock on because it's easier to swing around when you're not locked on. And you're going for certain body parts as well. Like, what necessarily is damaging on one, whether it be the tail, it could be the leg on another, or the belly, or the head. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. And actually, it's funny because you're clearly very good at Monster Hunter games, which I tend to struggle with them as well at the start. And then once I get into it, it's fine. But they're very souls like in their combat, and they will punish you for overextending yourself, and you have to learn the monster's attack patterns. Um, it's just that you're generally fighting one monster in an area in Souls it's like every enemy is like a boss is a monster yeah yeah. and um, I, 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 I do think it's by only jumping into this style of game every so often like whereas if you're playing this consistently like by the sounds of it you guys do it's very easy to pick that bike back up again and continue on it whereas if you're having to reteach yourself after playing X amount of different style games. It takes that extra little little bit of time to get back into that kind of rhythm. I think it's but a mental that... thing as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you just change the sprint to, or you add in a fucking um, what was it the, the crouch button to L three just to really fuck with people's muscle memory. Mm-hmm. That's that was Elden Ring for the first three hours, just constantly pressing fucking L three yeah. when I needed to sprint. Thinking you were sprinting, and, I was and then I, t- and then I was crouching and getting killed. Oh. But even like if we had recorded our, which we couldn't do, but if we had recorded our play session for the first hour of Elden Ring, we were getting schooled by the fucking the tree yeah, sentinel because we weren't we weren't supposed to be fighting them, but we were being stubborn. We're like we can do it, and we got close once or twice. But it's that case of like we went in knowing it's like okay this is any souls game we just have to be patient to keep at it yeah and then eventually went no we're being idiots we're not supposed to fight them now let's go we get leveled up and then you did it in the later session you got you were leveled no, up i, I did it like four, four o'clock them. in the morning yeah yeah and you spanked them and then we went back in together and we spanked them and with, with an invader there <laughs> with, with an invader there Oh, it is. Like, I think once you learn how to approach it, I think that's the thing. It's not learning how to play the game. It's learning to approach the game. Yeah. And once you learn how to approach any Souls game, you'll master it. Because the games themselves aren't complicated games. It's just you have to get over the difficulty and then learn to play it, the game on its terms rather than the way you want to play it. I think that's where and a lot I- of people do get stuck is that, again, I'll use Destiny as an example a lot of time in destiny we're just fucking slaying everything like we we farm bosses for fun we we're all we're, we're gods basically with crazy magic powers and then to go from that to playing as ah uh, you're just a normal guy fighting people who do the exact same amount of damage to you as you do to them mm. and if you mess up you're being punished whereas in destiny it's just like ah, i can do what i want so uh, changing your the wires in your brain to go from one to the other because I'm, I'm using destiny as an example but most games are that way where yeah. we are we're the powerful ones but we're going on a story or yeah we're super powerful but we lost our powers and now we have to get our powers back which is everyone's favorite i'd walk slow for half an hour whereas you remember that was souls a thing games, like it's a souls game is no you're fight, you're fighting on the enemy's level they're fighting on your yeah. level. Yeah, no, you're fighting up. It's an uphill battle yeah, for you're a certain fighting, amount of time. You're below their level, and you better catch up. Yeah. Um, it's like doing a nightfall in that things hit. It's like harder. doing a GM. It's like doing a GM nightfall. Yeah. 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 Um, but you remember that was a trend back in the early noughties in the the PS3 going to PS4 era, where your upgrades, one of them would be your fucking sprint. And you're like, why am I walking for the first hour of this game? Yeah. Because Sprint was an upgrade, like, seriously? It's like that way, and it's just because that it's that time period, that's the way it is in Diamond and Pearl. You don't have yeah. a sprint. You don't have a sprint for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then your mom's like, oh, no. ah, you can sprint now. XP share, is it yes or no? Yeah. Oh, thank fuck. Oh, is it? Oh, Actually, crap. just speaking oh. of the sprint, you don't have to hold down... X. I need to set square. 
you don't have to hold down square X to sprint. It's literally just push the left trigger the whole way over. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Even though I'm, I'm still hold, I'm still holding down X out of habit. Yeah. But, or A or whatever it fucking is. Too many different controller types, man. Yeah. I'm struggling because I've got two different kinds of controller in front of me right now. <laughs> and neither of them are correct. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts to add in on your, your no, first just on the sprinting, that was a that was a pet hate of mine. I've got many yeah. pet hates and that's one of them. Sprint is not an ability to unlock, you just have it naturally. It was also a trend of games where oh you've got all these powers and now you've lost them, go earn them back. It's like Infamous And it was it was that. in sequels, in sequels. It's like I had all yeah. these powers. Just yeah. build on them, make the enemies better, and then Give me new powers. Don't make me earn back my same powers again, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Fucking infamous. I really hate that. Yeah. Sucker punch but I love this. And put it at, ah, I especially love Second Son. That game's fantastic. I only downloaded that recently because I fantastic. never I completed it. Well. I, can, I platinumed one or two. I can't remember one of them anyway. But um, I have platinum Demon Souls and I've platinumed. I won't, I won't be platinum Demon Souls, I don't think. It's easy. It's an easy platinum. Yeah, but it involves multiple playthroughs. I'll see well, where I end. I'll see where I end up. I if have, you're an idiot like me, I've looked my way straight. into. I've looked my way into a few challenges, into a few trophies. I didn't let okay. the adjudicator fall down. I did that without happening. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, actually, I stumbled into that boss fight. Just I was just walking around like, oh, fog wall. Nah, it couldn't be a boss fight yet. Opened the fog wall. There's the boss fight. So I was like, fuck, panic, and I tried to just fire blast magicum but it doesn't work because he takes damage on the head so i had to like dodge open up my pause menu equip a bow dodge open up my pause <laughs> menu equip arrows dodge and then i was okay i was able to kill him because all the damage goes into his well lack of a head. Bird on his head yeah um and then on the other one in three one uh, t the Latria, the first Fool's oh, Idol. Oh yeah, yeah. I did that without hitting any of her clones. I noticed that you you got really fucking lucky with that one. No, I didn't. You didn't spot the the tell though, because I there was twice. I did. First... I no no. I knew the tell. The big I... the big soul arrow. Oh, there's a few tells. There's like two or three tells. Okay. One tell is the enemies, the ads in the area will look towards the boss. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't use that one. I used the much more obvious one. When you lock onto a clone, they have a health bar. The boss did not have a health bar when you locked onto her. See, I don't lock on, so I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, the boss doesn't have a health bar because the health bar is at the bottom of the screen. So if you oh, lock okay. onto a clone, they have their own. And I just went, "Oh, that's not it." Because the and it was actually I did get lucky figuring that out because the first one I went to after the initial attack i managed to get the boss again that's what i was saying like you yeah. got lucky in that the first one was I got, beside yeah. you and but then if you look at there's a point where i did lock onto a clone i went oh mm. it has a health bar that's obviously a clone so i went for the other one because i i have to use the other one which is the one that shoots the big soul arrow is the oh sorry yeah arrow. yeah sorry the, bi the main one shoots the big soul arrow and the baby ones shoot baby soul arrows. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, and Sorry. you killed one of them before the big soul arrows. Like, there's no fucking way you knew that that's what it was. I was like, no, no, I knew it. You got, the you got lucky. The no, the helper. I didn't, yeah. See, I didn't know that one. So. Just so you know, the helper. I'm going to need to remember all of this. So much. Yeah. Do you know, actually, I was laughing. Do you know the boss in the tutorial that just stomps on your face? Vanguard, yeah. The Vanguard. Right at the beginning of the game, before you go to the Nexus for the first time. Bill didn't do the tutorial. Oh. I probably did, like, Ages my first ago. time playing it. Well, yeah, I won bang that boss. It's very funny. With the Firestorm? It's very funny. Oh, this is, yeah, where he kill, he has to kill you, yeah, yeah. But you can't yeah, kill yeah. yeah. It's very funny. Just absolutely shredded it. Magic is OP. <laughs> But the, no, so the, mo the most the most OP part, and I I'll actually this is coming looping into Demon Souls. Demon Souls is the entry level, not not the shit on your experience, right? Devil. Demon no, Souls it's... is the entry level 
because of some of the systems that are in place that they haven't it's also a bit more difficult with the bonfires been so far apart but magic is so powerful in demon souls it's ridiculous what makes it really overpowered is that when you get to a specific level with intelligence you regen magic power just by walking around it just it regens itself over time without doing anything it's like getting free super in destiny jesus And then you can make it more powerful by getting the Insanity Catalyst and then holding the Crisp Blade as well and having the Magic Head Wrap that I have. And um, I won't be getting the Insanity Catalyst. Yeah, I can't remember. That's Is that the Gold Monk or which one is it again? Yeah. I got yeah. something different. I can't remember what I got the first time. I didn't like the idea of having my Magic Power. Yeah, it is annoying. But yeah, but it's I'll OP. Just... Yeah, it's very OP. But um. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add in, Dill? Anything you want to add in about your um, first experience? Yeah, don't leave me. <laughs> That's all, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy ready. to play through that stuff with you. I do think, just to touch on that, when we are playing with you, I'm I'm not going to bullshit bosses as much as possible. Yeah, okay, well, just to get the... Just so you it. get some sort of experience. Like yeah. The only reason I burnt the penetrator to a crisp was because of lag. I literally could not see what was yeah. going on, so I just went, fuck it, I'm just doing this. Um, but yeah, I just think, just to give you some idea, just not to bullshit them. Cause... Well, we did that yeah. with Flame Lurker where we yeah. were in, and like, you yeah, actually, we actually got, got, in, got his help down hits. the whole way, yeah. And then what we, what Kev and I were doing was like, we were kiting the boss. Kiting whenever around, you, yeah. Whenever you got hit, one of us would be nearby to take the, the aggro, and the aggro. you could heal up. And, yeah. and like, I think sometimes you kind of need that as well. Like you just need the breathing space, and then yeah, reset it, and then yeah. Especially for your first sign. Yeah, um, I'll see how I feel over the weekend. Um, I'm around be able anyway. To get a few hours in. Yeah, I'll be around for ten days. <laughs> I do plan on finishing. Um, like what? Um, oh, we're on World that. Tree, is it? Um, we, yeah, you've got to a point in World 1 where you, it's better to go away and come back. Um, you finished all of World 2, so yeah, we're doing World 3. I didn't like World 3, I didn't like the latri at the prison. I don't know, I just didn't like it. I don't like and the I'm enemies in it. I don't like the fucking Cthulhu-looking fuckers. Squidwards. Yeah. Squidwards. Yeah, I just didn't like it, even though it's very bloodborne in its, in its aesthetic, I just didn't like the level. Um... World four was I I that was fine. The How storm many is there? Is it? Yeah. Five. 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 Okay. So I'm essentially like halfway through the game. You've done yeah. a fair chunk, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've been marking mine off by play session how far I've been. I'm getting there as well. Yeah, like if anything it's enticed me to play it more <laughs> rather than um steer me away. And I think that's mainly what i needed was to get past that initial kind of threshold of knowing what to do and knowing how to approach it and, and let's not take away that you actually killed your first boss on your own like you actually killed true true a boss you know it's not like we've come in and made it easy for you you got that experience and you broke that barrier yourself we may have been telling you like oh shield up or watch out for this or that yeah, but you broke that barrier. Like, it's put that into action. What do you think, um, Steven, is the most difficult boss in Demon Souls? Just because it's a game we've all played. Um, it probably is the second last boss. Um, the one you're about to face. Um, yeah. I'm not saying his name in case anyone. I can't think is of its name. It, I know the name. I just can't think of it. I I know it anyway, but that. Is it probably the hardest one? Do you want me to tell you the name? I just I want to remember it. It's annoying me. The Maid Nastria. No? no. Lady no. Dirty Colossus? No, God no. The last oh. one of one 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 one, Old, one the five. King. Old King. Yeah. Sorry. Old King sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, and then there's another boss after that. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, I'm not going to face that yet. I'm going to do World 5's bosses first. So I'll do the Colossus and Maiden Astria first. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know who made that. Australia is now. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I was thinking of the the one you use to level up. Um, yeah, that boss is easy enough. Yeah. But the uh, old thing. Out of the ones I've fought, I think Flame Lurker. I probably think is probably the hardest one because it's so aggressive. Mm. Um, and you're at a point in the game where you haven't quite unlocked the OP stuff yet. Dragon God is probably one of the hardest because it's not a fight. But you know what? It's not the only (laughs) one. There's there's a few of them like that in the game where it's a quiz as much as a... Like, um... Adjudicator Mm -hmm. is also shoot in the head. Or, um... Fool's Idol is... Find the doll, the right one. To fight one. And also, if you don't kill the guy above the church beforehand, it can be an endless fight. Oh yeah, and even um, to call them the Storm King as well. Even oh, the yeah. Storm Ruler, like if you don't know to pick that weapon up. The weapon up. Well, yeah. You can get through it. It'll just take a while. There, there is a bit of a cheese spot there as well if you really want to. Not I, for the boss, think... but for the, for the rest of the ads. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we uh, may start moving to wrap up because I think Dill yeah. might actually die on us. That's fine. Um, I keep getting little spurts of energy and then I'm kind of <laughs> like, ooh. Yeah. I don't know if there's a whole lot of news that's worth covering that isn't depressing this week. Um, we try to steer clear of the depressing news. I think it's just better from yeah. Yeah. yeah, sanity. Uh, the GTA stuff, did you see Rockstar said that there there's a patch coming next week that'll improve a lot of it and they'll have patches it's just kind of like usually i read these kind of posts with a yellow background (laughs) (laughs) it it just it was funny but they're also they're reinstating the classic versions of the games to pc stores and and, it's a bullshit move no no and if you bought the new game you get the old ones for free (laughs) but is it on the rockstar launcher is it yeah, but I assume it's going to be on Steam as well. That's well, we'll see. I own I own San Andreas and um, Vice City on Steam. They're not taking that shit off me. Fair enough. I got them as yeah. part of some big fucking pack at some point. For like four quid. But yeah, nice. now we'll wrap it up there because I think Dale needs to go onto the sofa with Pokemon and chill out. Um, I don't even think I can play Pokemon. No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I've rested. That's the one thing I didn't actually cover was AEW had a pay-per-view event last Saturday and it was fucking fantastic again because AEW know how to do pay-per-views. Uh, WWE have one this weekend and it's going to have not a fucking bar on it. Just... But yeah, it's wrestling. No one cares. No. no. AEW is fucking great. It really is. It's so entertaining. I'm Probably afraid if I start awesome. watching it. No, we're not talking about Formula One. No. Prima donnas. Right. They make fucking footballers look like men. Ridiculous. We'll be back next week. It's not even the it's not even the drivers, it's just like the teams. Yeah. yeah, The managers. Yeah. 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 We will probably be back next week with another episode of whatever. Um Dill will hopefully be feeling better. Um and he's okay. not going to be in work, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do a podcast. Yeah, I'm due to go away Wednesday for three nights, but yeah. I don't think that's happening. Uh, don't think so, so I will be here. <laughs> yeah, We'll have to decide what our topic is. We don't know yet. It's a bit early to join the Game of the Year discussion. I'd rather wait until mid-December to do that, for what it's worth. That yeah. can be our final one of the year or something. Yeah, I think we'll probably take a couple of weeks off there over Christmas. Yeah, yeah. We can all dress uh, up as Christmas trees. Right. On that, on, on, that, yeah. on, on that note, that's I was talking about Souls games. Me and Steven loved them and Dill's getting there. He's in transition. Ten years behind. Ten yeah. years behind. Making out of game. If yeah. Bloodborne ever comes to PC, we will do a playthrough. Ooh, Peace. Oh yes. okay. I actually I downloaded my Sekiro boss fights off my Facebook and then deleted that. So they will be going up onto the maybe onto our YouTube. I haven't decided where I put them yet, but I'm gonna put them somewhere just to keep them safe. And then everyone can laugh at me running away from bosses. Bye! See you next time.